Hi everyone, welcome to another Super Collider tutorial. Apologies it's been a while, but Super Collider has changed incredibly over the last uh, over the last while, and I didn't want to make loads of videos and then have to redo them all. So um, let's get back to where we were. So we're going to do a quick recap video, and then very shortly I'll be uploading another video uh, where we actually start to learn Super Collider. Um, so let's all get on the same page. Um, preferably supercollider.sourceforge.net and um, so if we head across to our internet browser and go to that website supercollider.sourceforge.net and head across to our downloads page and uh, if we download whichever version is relevant to you now Windows you're going to be loving it because finally you're on the same uh, same page as everyone else what they've done is they've rewritten uh, what it looks like so that everyone's uh, everyone sees the same thing. So we don't want to click old IDE here for Mac users. We want to click the uh, the one above it, the, just the standard install, uh, which contains our lovely new integrated development environment. So um, we go ahead and we we hit that. It'll it'll download for us and uh, all that good stuff. And then all we need to do is drag it across to our our to our applications folder and uh, then we're ready to go. So if we crack open Super Collider you'll notice crazy things begin to happen and you get wonderful screens that pop up which is great. I, I really love this new uh, this new IDE um, as do most of the uh, most of the user base. Um, so what we've got is this new uh, integrated development environment. I'll wait a second until it loads up. Okay cool. So, down here, at the very bottom right, we have um, our status windows. Um, so the interpreter is live, uh, which means that we can talk to everything. And the server is up and running, everything's green. Um, so we're showing usages and um, number of UGENs, number of synths running, number of groups in the audio server and number of synth definitions. You won't know that unless you really dig around in the documentation. Um, but anyway, up to the top right here uh, we have our our new help browser uh, which is permanently there now. I mean you can you can get rid of it now. Uh, you can you can undock, detach or close or whatever you want to do with it. Um, but let's leave it there because why why would you not want the documentation beside you while you're writing? I'm just gonna just gonna resize it um, and then make our make our code a little bit bigger. Cool. So this is what it looks like. So here's the bit where we write our code. Here's our documentation, which we're we're pretty much always going to need. And uh, here's our post window where Super Collider shouts at us for doing wrong things. Um just as it did before. So in essence, not that much has changed. It just looks a lot, a lot different, and it's all in this one window. But you'll notice um, that Super Collider opens. This is the logo logo for the for the IDE. But there's also this over here, the SC Lang, which is effectively what the old one was. So what's happening now is that we have this IDE, which is sending messages to the the uh, the language server and then it's sending it to the audio server so it's still it's still client server based but there's sort of an extra step is 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 a is a way to think about it so there's this client that sends it to another client that then sends it to a server um so we've got the IDE which sends the messages to the language server which then sends it to the audio server if it needs to go there, um, and then all the all the magic happens. So it's still client server. There's just a sort of extra step here. Um, now, as you as you can see, mine has already started itself up, um, and it's all running. That's because I have a startup file running in the background that does all the code at the start that you always need to do to get Super Collider to actually run um, everything. So the way to do that is go up into File, Open Startup File, 
which will automatically open up here. Now yours will be blank. I've written the code that always needs to be written. So what's happening here is I'm telling the default server. Now before we had it set to the, uh, the internal server, but that's not really how it works anymore. Everything's done through the local server pretty much now. Um, you'll see, the only reason I used the, the internal server in previous videos is because it allows you to do GUI stuff, uh, graphical uh, interfaces for uh, interacting with your programs. But that is, it's dealt with a little bit differently now, so we can boot the local server. So the default server is the local server, then we're assigning it to the global variable s, and then we're telling it to start up. Uh, which is what it's done and it spits out the same information that it did before and um, yeah everything's everything's good everything's green down the bottom right which means everything's up and running so just to confirm that uh, everything still works we're gonna do our our demo code our hello world um, our sign off dot ar and then in brackets 440 comma 0 comma 0.5 0.5 just to make sure it's not really going to blow up on our faces um, now the execution command has slightly changed um, for us on the Mac uh, it's now shift return or command return depending on the context um, for now because uh, everything's fine um, it doesn't actually matter which one we use um, because it's quite a small amount of code there's only one one line and um, one statement so what we can do is hit shift return and then that works beautifully and um, the stop command is still command full stop or command period if you're one of our friends in America if you are hello um, but I'm gonna be calling it full stop because that's what it is and um, so we've got our sign ask which we play with shift return and then we stop it with command full stop um, and that's us back up and running everything's good and um, obviously when you open your startup file and write this code and um, I'll just make it bigger so you can see it and um, I'll put it again I'll put it in the description and um, but once you've once you've written that you just hit uh, command s to save or whatever your local equivalent is based on your platform you can close it again um, and actually you'll have noticed that it's uh, the IDE is now tabbed uh, like an internet browser which is pretty cool um, so yeah so you save it close it down you don't need to think about it um, you could execute it or you can just close it down close down super collider start it up again and it'll run that code on startup and everything will be green and good to go um, but yeah so that's that's pretty much everything we're, we're back up to speed um, and very shortly I'll hopefully be uploading another video that will um, teach us all how to how to really get started programming in Super Collider. Uh, so that's going to be it's going to be going up quite soon. So stick with me, um, and hopefully we'll we'll manage to get through it. Um, and uh, I hope you like the new the new IDE. Uh, the guys worked really hard on it, and uh, I think it's great. Um, but uh, you only really know the power of it once you start really coding uh, in Super Collider. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much everything from me. And um, so stick around for the uh, for the the start of the real tutorials. As I say, um, you know the reason this has taken so long is because they were I knew this I knew these big changes were coming, so I needed time to uh, to learn uh, how to get my head around everything that's new and uh, I needed to just stop making the videos so that uh, I didn't have to redo everything and um, so thanks for sticking with me and uh, as always thoughts and comments are appreciated I try to reply to everything but I know that's uh, that's not always what happens but um, I do try my best and uh, yeah thanks for thanks for sticking with me and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get started really soon thanks guys